Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. I hope you enjoyed the last session. One thing I want to share with you, this is why I defend the church. I really hear a lot of people trash preachers, mega churches, um, leaders, church leaders. It's almost like they're, they're digging and scratching for something to criticize. I don't really want to, I don't want to guess at how God feels about that because what you're doing is very divisive, but we'll leave that as it, as it is. I'm going to deal from my standpoint. That's your business. This is my business. Now, this is what I want you to hear. When I first got saved, I didn't know jack about the Bible. I didn't know jack about the things of God. I was lost in the sauce, baby. I was taking care of my father. And after two months of him being home, he knew there was, excuse me, two weeks. He knew there was a God and he gave his heart to the Lord after he saw the miracle right before his eyes. Now, after he passed away, the church helped me come up with a service for my father. I had nothing to wear. I had no shoes that were presentable. I had no money. Listen to this, you guys, especially you critical ones. My father was a sick, weak man, so he didn't add anything special to the church. I was rope busted and not disgusted because I was freshly saved, but I didn't have anything to offer the church. Do you hear me? My life was wrapped up in taking care of my father. Now, the pastor called the women's chairman, had the woman's chairman on the church budget. This was on church money. Took me to the store had her take me to the store, had me buy underwear, slit, I mean everything, stockings, bra, dress, shoes, the whole nine yards. Now I knew how to take care of my own hair, but I didn't have money for anything else. And the church bought every stitch of clothes I had on my back for my father's memorial service. Now, I don't know what churches you know about, but you can look from the outside looking in and you can find a whole lot of stuff that reminds you of phoniness and nonsense and BS. You can, oh yeah, you can nitpick till the cows come home. Yeah, look at that, look at that. That ain't about nothing. But you have to be in it to really know what's going on. I went to another church. I, my back was up against the wall, baby. And I was in dire need of several thousand dollars. Or I would have been out on the street. The church supply. When I went to the pastor to say, I won't be able to start making payments to reimburse you until the second month because I have to, I have to turn on the utilities and all of that. She looked up at me, a little short lady. <laughs> she looked up at me and said, this isn't a lending institution. We're helping you. You have got to understand. Stop, saints. Listen, those of you who call yourself a Christian, stop being so fast, so quick, so, 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 so zestful to tear down the church, the image of the church. Not all churches 
are ripoffs. Not all churches are pimping you. You have got to understand. No church, no denomination, no movement has the last word on the word. We get that. But neither do you. You don't have the last word on the games churches play. Especially when you're on the outside looking in. You ever hear that old song? On the outside looking in. Well, guess what? You can't tell what's going on till you walk your happy hips into those opening doors and sit your little hiney down and get to know the people for yourself. Get to know the leaders for yourself. It may not be a perfect place, but I bet you one thing, it ain't going to be as bad as you've been parading around it, it, it's been to the whole public. You get to know the people. You get to learn to love these people and understand them up close and personal. And you'll sing a whole different song, baby. One day I was in a real pickle. We did not have the money to fix our plumbing. I'm going to share two stories. One is mine and one is another lady's. We did, I did not have the money. My ex-husband at the time did not have the money for us to call a plumber. And we had to finesse that doggone toilet situation for one whole month. I don't know how the pastor got wind of it. But he called me over and he bugged his eyes at me like he often did. And he said, he quoted scripture. You have not because you asked not. Why didn't you ask us for help? We wouldn't have had the money to pay you back. All right. So what does he do? He says, you take this number down. You call it first thing in the morning. And the plumber will be there. You make an appointment for him to come and fix your toilet. And don't you worry about the bill. I never saw a bill. Never saw a bill. And I know that the pastor took care of that bill out of his family budget. Number two, I know a woman who was in her house embarrassed like me and my ex-husband were. She had an issue with her plumbing. And they had a whole lot more people living in that house. This story I'm telling you is in my book. That still blows my mind. Okay. She did not want to tell anybody. <laughs> they were trying to keep it on the down low because they wanted to try to handle this themselves. And guess what happens? Her pastor comes and knocks on her door. Now, who wants company at a time like that? I don't think so. But guess what? Guess what he told her? Sister so-and-so, oh, the Lord, I felt the Lord wanted me to come by. Oh, really? At a time like this? You sure you heard from the Lord? But listen to what he did. Before she could start talking, I think his nose showed him why he needed to stop by. Because of the kind of heart this man had. She opened the door. He entered and made a beeline to the bathroom. And she's like, no. Wait, 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 wait. We have a situation. Yeah, well, he already could, uh, could, could, could whiff that out, okay? And he rolled up his Church of God, church go to meeting sleeves, took off his blazer, got down on his knees, put his bare hand, not with plastic line like the rest of us would have done, bare hand into the family spoils, baby, and cleared that toilet barehandedly, the pastor. 
got up off his knees, washed his hands. Listen to this. Put his clothes back on, sat there for a while, encouraged her, prayed for her, prayed for their financial situation. And guess what? <laughs> Away went troubles down the drain. Now, that, for your information, happened in a church. The pastor, okay, that you say is always collecting, passing the collection bucket around, pimping off the saints, came and did that. What that showed me, when I, when I heard her story, it painted a perfect picture of how God's love comes into our lives and he comes into our cesspool of horrors to clean our mess up. Now, I say that to say, quit being so quick to trash the name and reputation of God's church. Please stop doing that. You could be doing yourself a disservice in the eyes of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. I just want to let you know, and those of you who are not sure about what you're hearing about the churches, whether it's true, whether it's false, whether they're real, whether it's a whole, a whole farce, whatever, I'm here to tell you. There are some real churches out there with some real genuine church leaders and some real people. I wouldn't be part of it if they weren't real. Because I cannot, I, I, hey, homie, don't play phony. So I'm here to tell you. There are some churches that are messed up, but they're not always messed up because they're phony. They're messed up because they're just not taught well. That's all. They're not well equipped, but it doesn't mean that God writes them all. So don't you dare pick up your little judgmental anvil and slam it down on the table against any church because you aren't in it to know what's happening. You hear me? Now, y'all, I ask you to please ask God to fill your hearts with more love. And open your eyes to what the body of Christ really is. Because it's not a well baby clinic, so you're never going to find a perfect one. And remember, look at what God did for you, baby. And if you can put up with you, like I put up with me, you and I can put up with anybody. God bless you.